Hey everyone, my name's Jason. I'm a community manager at Coffee Stain Studios. And this week, you probably saw the teaser for the world changes, right? Uh, how did you like it? Hope you liked it. I bet it was good. You probably have a ton of questions or maybe you don't. I don't know, but I'm going to answer questions today, whether you have them or not. All right. We got a lot of content to cover today as we talk about the world and gameplay exploration changes in Update 8. Today's video will cover a lot. So I'm thinking at, you know, from the get go, uh, first, we should ho hopefully have some time stamps in the timeline so you can easily jump around. So that'll be helpful. But also let's just go over at the beginning of the video what we're gonna talk about and then we'll go into detail. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the changes that are gonna come to the map in update eight, of course, but also the world perimeter. What does that mean? But we'll talk about that. We're also gonna be talking about a new roadmap for what changes will happen to the world in the future as well. We're also gonna be talking about the gameplay exploration changes, including new creatures that are coming in update eight. We'll also talk about the impact of all of these changes on your save file and how you can best prepare going into update eight. And then lastly, we'll show off some of the maps like we've done in the past, visualizing what these changes might mean. And we've got three maps for you this time, which is gonna be the changes for update eight, the changes post update eight, and the exploration gameplay changes that have that are coming in update eight. Okay, so that's a lot. Let's just get on with it. Diving right in. Let's talk about changes to the world map. So first of all, there's just some like general stuff that we need to talk about. And first thing I want to mention is that there's going to be no major overhauls like we saw with the Spire Coast previously. And so that immediately rules out any major, major, major disruptions to anyone's factories. There might still be some dis disruptions, but nothing like what y'all went through with the Spire Coast. One other thing to mention is that we have new foliage in the game, new types of foliage, and we've also moved around old foliage. And so players can expect foliage to pop up again in their factories. I can't really comment on the severity of this. We've taken steps to make sure that it doesn't pop up as much as it needs to, but there is, there is an element of this that is kind of out of our control, unfortunately. So it just means that you'll probably get trees and bushes in your, uh, in your factory and you just need to grab your chainsaw and go bananas. One other general pass that we've done kind of throughout the world a little bit, I, I think I'll, I'll specify a little bit more as we go on. And it may slightly, it may slightly affect your factories probably not in any super meaningful ways, is that we have recreated some of the cliff structures that have been in the game. And the reason for this is that some of the cliffs, well, most of the cliffs are constructed out of like pieces, right, in, in the game. Um, and the cliffs before, and many cliffs that are still in the game right now, were constructed out of non-uniformly scaled pieces. What that means is things that are stretched in one dimension, but not equally in other dimensions. And what that basically means is like squished pieces. And now this has various effects, including like the obvious visual one where there are certain uh, rocks uh, and cliffs that look squished or have parts of it that look squished in the texture. Uh, and so we've actually gone through a bunch of these uh, with some other new assets, I think some new assets or existing ones. I'm pretty sure there's some new ones in there too. Um, and recreated those cliffs as faithfully as possible using uniformly scaled pieces rather than non-uniformly scaled pieces. So what this means is that some of the cliffs that we've reworked should look better, but it also means that their structure and their shape may differ slightly, slightly though. Uh, there's been great effort gone into making sure that all the cliffs still remain as close as possible to what they were, so that this might mean that there might be some clipping in some buildings, um, or maybe some buildings are like floating a little more than they used to be before, but this shouldn't mean uh, cliffs swallowing up uh, fac entire factory buildings. Shouldn't mean, but uh, that's one general pass uh, thing that has happened. Uh, for the world. Okay, so quickly, let's just go over the biomes that have actually gotten some minor changes to them. Uh, these would be the crater lakes, the abyss cliffs, and also the grass fields. However, the grass fields, you know, the big arch in the grass fields, that has actually been reworked with the non-uniformly scaled cliff pieces like I was just talking about. So it's possible that any buildings that were on top of that or built very tightly around that may have some encroaching or extra space there, but largely the grass fields biome has just received minor polish. And what I mean by like these minor changes and minor polish is just some foliage polish and some low impact landscaping polish. Uh, nothing that should affect your factories. So the next group of uh, biomes that we're gonna talk about uh, are biomes that have received a medium amount of changes. Uh, and this might mean that there might be some mild to significant uh, foliage or landscape changes, which may cause some small amounts of uh, factory encroaching. 
in certain certain cases. But let's go let's go place by place here, and uh, I'll spell it all out for you. So the first thing is going to be the Titan Forest, and this probably has the most change probably out of anything, and this has a complete foliage overhaul. the The landscape and collisions of the Titan Forest, you know, landscape it, it is largely unchanged, um, but the landscape painting and look and feel has completely changed. So it's a different vibe in there. Um, the trees and the foliage have been completely, completely replaced. And so uh, the large Titan trees that you guys have known before, uh, they have also changed to a new model. Now, this may be problematic, okay? Uh, but the trees themselves, which are non-destructible, will still be in the same placement. So that hasn't changed. Their shapes and stuff have changed. Now, I think from what I've seen generally, they're a little thinner than they used to be. So we shouldn't have factory encroaching if you've built stuff around those trees. However, their shape as they go further up is different. And so it's possible that if you have built high up uh, tightly against Titan trees, that you may get factory encroaching um, or the tree encroaching on your factory way up there. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. The Eastern Dune Forest and the Coin Tree Forest also has gotten some attention. There's been a bunch of foliage changes and some kind of intense landscaping changes, uh, specifically to create some roads and pathways through this area. So factories should mostly be fine here, um, as it's been more things that have been taken away to create roads more than anything, but there might be minor clipping or uh, floating floating structures that have uh, previously been built in this area. The red jungle has gotten a full foliage overhaul, aside from the bigger trees, but the small trees that can be cut down have been overhauled. Um, this may mean trees popping up in your factories, but you should be able to take care of it. There's also been some mild landscape sculpting to facilitate better pathing through the jungle again. You'll see that this is a common theme throughout this update. A lot of like roads and, and pathing and things like that. And the red jungle is definitely uh, one of these areas where that has happened. This shouldn't have any major effect on existing factories. So you should be safe here if you've got stuff there. Uh, next area is going to be the rocky desert. Um, this is one area that got a lot of treatment when it comes to the non-uniformly scaled uh, cliff faces, so there's been a lot of that stuff been reworked here in the Rocky Desert, which means anything that is on or tightly around those uh, cliff faces um, or structures may have some floating or encroaching issues, but nothing, there shouldn't be anything too major. There's also been a lot of landscape polish that's happened as well, but it is mostly just polish, so it shouldn't really affect your factories too much. Just a lot of like flattening and smoothing out of certain things and creating like nicer transitions into cliffs, um, which sort of mimic reality a little more and things like that um like like sand erosion going down off cliffs and you know into the into the road things like that little little touches here and there but yeah factories for the most part should be safe here there's also been like a lot of foliage polish um the location of the foliage will still be in the same sort of area but um of course this may, might mean that the, that foliage pops back up in your factory again one of the reasons why we we went over this is as i was saying before roads and pathways are a major thing and we think that this area struggled a lot with navigation and so this has also gotten a bunch of like roads built into it as well to help with navigation for vehicles and on foot and because of this creation of roads um we've essentially made more space in this area than anything so it really does seem like if you run into factory placement issues here it's going to be that there's going to be floating stuff rather than things being swallowed up um but there has been a fair amount of changes so you'll have to go and inspect your factories there Maybe you could just build, if they're floating, just like chuck some foundations. Quick fix. <laughs> just slap a band-aid on it. <laughs> it worked for me for my factories, but I bet you guys have higher standards. I mean, I just let it float. Next area is the bamboo fields. Uh, this is a tricky one to kind of talk about because it was being reworked and then we ran into some like dev issues. Issues, okay? Just issues, you guys. Um, and... Uh, the intention was that we would give it a pass. Now, at the time of recording, I'm not 100% sure what kind of work has gone in. Um, the changes we wanted to make to this area likely won't make it in for update eight. Whoa, bet you weren't expecting to see me in this video. So I need to make a slight addendum here because Jace didn't have all the information when I was filming this and there's been a little bit of an update. So for bamboo fields, right now there's a little bit of a mismatch between the landscape and the foliage and that's going to be the case in update 8. So you're going to see changes to bamboo fields, but those changes are not final. It's going to be a bit messy in that area. And we're not going to be able to fix that for update 8, but we're going to fix that later. So after update 8, essentially. Uh, so just be aware of that if you intend to build in bamboo fields, uh, that area is not final. And there's going to be some changes there. All right. 
that's it. Back to the video. Whoa! The next area getting some changes is the Desert Canyons. Now, this is actually a fairly major change. Uh, I would say one of the bigger ones. The only thing about this area, though, is it's actually just a small area, and I, f I think not too many people used it for factory building um, either. Okay, so the thing about this area is that this has been converted into more of a transitional biome between all the biomes around it. Uh, and what this means is that there's been a lot of uh, cliffs that have been either completely replaced um, and just the, the general landscape of it has changed a little bit. And so the, and so there's a decent chance of uh, factories being swallowed up by these cliffs. So if you have factories in the desert canyons, I would recommend moving them out. The general shape of the cliff structure and positioning will be kind of the same, but like just some things will be moving. Okay, so we can't really guarantee anything. So it's probably best, it's probably best to assume that any factories there are unsafe as is. Um, but I think even if you don't do anything, it won't be that big of a disaster. And it looks really cool now, by the way. I love the, uh, how, how it's become more of a transitional thing. It looks super cool. Now one biome, I guess you would call it, are the, is the caves. And now caves, uh, are getting a bunch of updates as well, and some pretty major changes. We've talked about cave changes in the past, and I think I remember saying, um, uh, why, who builds in caves? And some people were like, I build in caves. Don't build in caves! <laughs> All right, because some of these cha uh, caves are changing so drastically that, like, it will really screw you over. So if you have any buildings in caves, take them out. Just take them out of the caves. Don't, don't build in caves. Now, the caves I'm talking about here are not, like, like underpass caves. It's, like, single-room caves that are sort of alone, and they're not me meant for navigation or factory building, for that matter. Uh, and those areas have gotten some fairly extensive changes. And any of the caves that have gotten those changes have gotten full structural changes and full foliage overhaul so it's completely different in those caves i don't know which caves those are <laughs> you're just gonna find out don't build in caves <laughs> and there will still be some caves that have not been overhauled yet uh but the intention is to give like the same treatment to all caves so again don't build in any of the caves uh and you will still see some caves that are lacking uh but those will be addressed in the future so that's all for the world changes that are going to be coming and all the areas that we didn't mention, like the Northern Forest or the Dune Forest or the Swamp or anything like that. Those have not received world changes in Update 8. Uh, the other thing is that the design team uh, considers all the areas that we have overhauled for this update to be, for the most part, largely, uh, in terms of layout, landscape and foliage, largely uh, uh, finished, right? Now, this does not mean that all like floating rocks or floating nuts or things like that have been taken care of. We're not doing that yet. We're doing that once the entire world and biome, we're happy with all of that. Then we're gonna go through and move everything because we don't wanna move everything and then change stuff and then have to move it again, okay? So we ha we are not addressing floating rocks and, uh, and nuts and things like that um, in this update, just so you know. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is I mentioned before at the beginning of the video is that there's going to be this world perimeter change. Now, what does that mean uh, about the world perimeter? Because it's getting a major change. So the world perimeter is sort of what it sounds like. It's the edges of the world, right? But it's uh, the, the playable area of the game has not changed. The world perimeter that we're talking about here is the non-playable areas beyond the play area. Yeah, it's basically just the look and feel of, you know, when you're standing and looking out outside the playable area, what that look and feel sort of looks like, like the vistas and things like that. Uh, so previously, you know, or currently, as you guys are playing, um, the most of the world's perimeter is just fog or ocean, right? And not really much is going out there. But now we're going to have these gorgeous, expansive vistas. And one of the things that I really, really love about uh, this world perimeter change is when you're looking out uh, in the vista and you see the biome changes between uh, the the world perimeter, like where you can't even go and you see those those transitions. I really, really love those. Another thing I love is like when you're in the um, like the, the grass fields or something and you look out over towards the dune desert and you see massive like dune desert mountains and things like that uh, looming over the horizon. I don't know if it's still going to be like that by the time this video comes out, but that's what it was like when I saw it and it, was, it looked really, really cool. And so in update eight, the world perimeter uh, will not be done, okay? But the intention is to re rework it all by by 1.0, okay? So some of the areas are done. And the areas that will be done is gonna be the Dune Desert, uh, which has like these really like nice mountains and this big like cool sinkhole looking thing. Um, the swamp is gonna get some world perimeter and also the grass fields, which you know has some like more like really expensive grass fields and like lush mountains in the back. Um, so those are the three areas that are gonna get these world perimeter uh, treatment. 
uh, and everything else will get a world perimeter treatment. Uh, that's the plan uh, by 1.0. Yeah, so these areas were just the areas that we felt were in the most need for uh, some kind of love, and so I think I think that makes sense. Um, and the other thing is, like, so far, this this the playable area that you've been on has always felt like an island on an alien planet, right? Because it was always surrounded by water. But our intention with the world perimeter is to better suggest that you're just on one part of an entire planet, like that this planet goes on beyond what you can see and, and influence. Um, and I, I think it looks really great, and I love that idea as well. And uh, I think it, I think it goes a long way to to changing what it feels like to be on the alien planet Massage Two ABB. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. Now you might be thinking of these world perimeter things. That man, that must take a long time to make all these like really gorgeous assets. But actually, we use this tool called Gaia, uh, which generates like really large elements or pieces that we use to construct this stuff. So like, shout out to that uh, for making it really doable for us to make these really gorgeous uh, world perimeter vistas and things like that. And also we're gonna, we're probably gonna be tweaking the fog so that you can actually see the vistas a little better in the future. So um, that's another change that will probably be coming. Okay, so that's what's coming in update eight and you may be interested in hearing what will come beyond update eight. And so we've created a little bit of a roadmap here. So as of recording, our intentions right now is to do some more minor landscape and foliage polish to the Western beaches, Western dune forest and the blue crater. The Southern forest will also get some minor landscape uh, and, and foliage polish as well. However, it is a little bit of a wild card and there is potential for more significant changes too, but we're not really sure as of yet. Uh, so maybe if you want to future proof, proof your factories, try steer clear of the Southern forest. Okay. There will also be some like global changes to areas around water features in the game moving forward as well. And that's a little hard to depict on any sort of like map or anything like that. So I'm not including it in the in the maps that we're distributing to you guys. But just know that there will be mild or mild sig significant at most changes to foliage and or landscape around water features moving forward. Okay, that's all I can say. All right, this is a big video, you guys, but we got we got more to talk about. So the next area that we're going to talk about is going to be the exploration gameplay changes coming in update eight. Okay, so by by exploration gameplay, what we're talking about is I'm talking about creatures, creature placement hazards like fart rocks, uranium deposits, destructible rocks. Um, we're also talking about edibles like berries and nuts. We're talking about artifacts like the summer sloops and the mercer spheres, power slugs, crash sites. These are exploration things we're talking about. And so various areas around the map have gotten like that were completely lacking these things uh, have gotten a. a a pretty heavy gameplay pass over them. Uh, so these areas we're talking about are the Spire Coast, uh, the cliffs between Dune Desert and Spire Coast. I think it's called Dune Desert Mountain or Dune Mountain Plateaus, I can't remember. Um, there's also the Abyss Cliffs has gotten a bit of a treatment as well. Uh, the Coin Tree Forest has gotten some love and also the Titan Forest. There have been other polish passes that have happened in other areas too around the map, mostly in starting areas, um, but that's kind of, I think, it for, for now. Uh, also, you might be wondering, well, aren't resource nodes an exploration feature as well? And yes, they are. We do consider resource nodes to be an exploration game, exploration gameplay feature. But uh, it's important to note that in update eight, there'll be no changes to resource nodes as of yet. Uh, we do plan on doing that in the future. There are some areas like the Spire Coast that desperately need changes to resource nodes or maybe more added, maybe moved, who knows. Those kinds of changes will come in the future. Uh, when we do uh, another gameplay exploration pass over the entire map later, okay? And that will all come in one go as opposed to like little bits here and there. Uh, some other changes is that we're adding two new creatures, you guys. It's going to be two new variants of the hog. There's going to be the cliff hog and the nuclear hog. And both of them are high-end kind of late game tough creatures and they have some new attacks. So for example, this is what the cliff hog looks like. And one thing that's really noteworthy here is there's no fluffy tail. This has like this new sort of bulldoze attack where it runs at you and it, and boy, it, it runs <laughs> and it doesn't stop running when it gets you. It just keeps going and it does sort of like a damage over time. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and then also here's the nuclear hog, which is a really menacing beast. Also no fluffy tail, by the way. Uh, it has the same uh, bulldoze uh, attack as the cliff hog does as well, but it also is radioactive. So it does damage over time, AOE damage if you're near it, unless you're wearing a hazmat suit. So that's, uh, yeah, just a, a, a cool little touch there. I think it's pretty neat. And those are the new creatures. So now some of you might be wondering, okay, we've made changes to the map and we've made some changes to gameplay placement of objects and all this kind of things. 
what does this mean for my save file and for my factories? And so I've tried to provide as much information as possible as going through each of the areas for what level of change you can expect in those areas. But at the end of the day, this all largely depends on your particular factories and where you build stuff. And so I can't really answer the question of like, what's gonna happen um, to your save files in that way. Uh, you might be wondering, are my save files okay in general? Your save files are fine. They should, they should be back up your saves uh but uh yeah in terms of like whether or not your factories are going to be stuck in things it really depends on your your factory where you where you built them and uh, all i can do is just let you know to what degree some areas are changing but the f the feel that i get is that this this isn't anything super huge and i don't think it's anything that y'all can't overcome if there are any problems with your factories and so I've, I've created a couple maps to help you as well as we've done in the past and um well i say a couple but i mean three maps and you know this this is just in an attempt to help visualize where those changes will be and their severity and you know in, in a way that's easy to sort of understand and hopefully i've done a good enough job here that's going to help you um, in your decision making from this point on so the first map that i've created is one that focuses solely on the uh, landscape and foliage changes that are coming in update 8 um, and that one is going to be called the update 8 planned map changes um, and then there's another map which is going to be focusing on post update 8 landscape uh, map changes. Uh, so you can check that one out as well for what we plan to do. Uh, I've also included another map which is going to highlight where the gameplay exploration changes have taken place for update 8 in case you want to go and explore there and farm items from there or something. Um, and so hopefully that will help you out as, as well. I have uploaded all three of these maps to our press kit as we've done in the past before. I'll leave a link in the description below directly to the folder that will have these maps. Um, if anything is incorrect or unclear, you guys can let us know. And if we need to make any revisions to those files, we will we'll update them in the press kit there. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, add it to that folder. Okay, so this was a lot of information. That's a lot. <laughs> if you made it this far, congratulations. Uh, but I, I hope it was all clear. I did my best to try and make this as digestible as possible um, and to make this as good of a resource for you to refer back to if you need it, okay? And so if you found this helpful, leave a thanks, Jace. Helps a lot in the comments below. And consider spreading this video. Spread the word to your fellow pioneers so that they're not surprised by the world changes in Update 8. One thing that I noticed in the past is that, like, even though there's a lot of y'all who watch these videos here, um, it's still not everyone. And as much as we try to get the word out about these world world changes, there's still always stray people who d just didn't see the video. And then they contact us saying like, hey, everything's under the <laughs> under the map now or something, you know? So if we can try and get this uh, out there to as many people as possible uh, to mitigate uh, any, any painful experiences <laughs> inside his factory, that'd be great. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much for hanging out. Take care, have a lovely weekend, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye!